Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever time it is that you join us. I, I pray that it's a good one for you. Today, Sunday, July 23rd. I was supposed to be here earlier, but I ended up having some company uh, come to the apartment house. Um, but I'm always happy to have company. Hi, I'm so glad you're here. I have somebody to engage with. I don't think anybody's going to be here because it's lunch. I wasn't expecting anybody, but I would have recorded. I had Flora drop by, Damien, and then Hav and, and Arla. So I, I had visiting and talking. And we, we're excited because uh, we're going to grill today. We're going to make hamburgers outside. And I, I've just been wanting to. We finally got a new grill, and I'm really excited about well, I'm not going to cook. I put the ACs on because it's going to be in the 80s today. I know I'm not going to complain. So let's get on with this. I've done my prayers at home, but we're going to do these prayers and we're going to start with our gratitude prayer, which is right here. Okay. In our gratitude prayer, let's say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Mighty God, thank you that you give the gift of abundant eternal life. The Bible says that whatever we do, whether in word or deed, we should do it all in the name of Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God the Father, may our lives be filled with thanksgiving and praise for your countless blessings. Give us assurance that you supply every need through your generosity. <clears throat> May grace, mercy, and peace be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Son and the Holy Spirit in truth and love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, so now I'm going to, but you know, this kind of that prayer, I just, we went to Mass and there was three, th the readings, but I was focusing what really, um, what really stood out was the parables that Jesus talk, talked. And there was that one parable about the farmer who planted good seeds and his enemy of wheat. And his enemy came and in between the wheat, he put weeds, he planted weeds. So when the plant started growing, when the plant started growing, the weeds were growing up in between the wheat. And the workers, the field workers said, Lord, should we pull out these weeds? You know, we thought you planted good seed. And he said, he said, no, leave, leave the, he said, leave the weeds in because if you pull the weeds out, you might pull out the good wheat. And so when the, when it came, when it was time to harvest, the wheat grew along with the weeds. And they said, master, now what do you want us to do? It's time to harvest. He said, Gather up all the, the weed and the wheat, separate them, bundle up the, the weeds, and we'll burn it. And the wheat, you know, we'll harvest. And that parable really made me think, and I've heard it before, and I never really thought of it. I took notes, but they're, of course, upstairs because I had to run down. And um, it made me think, you know, that when the harvest comes, you know, do we want to be with the weed or do we want to be with the wheat? And, and uh, I'm just really stuck in my mind that I saw it that way, that I had never really looked at it before in that way. And then Father talked about uh, giving us the choice, you know, whether we want to do good or we want to do bad. Do we, where do we want to stand in the end during judgment time? Do we want to burn with the weed or do we want to be harvested with the wheat? So... That was just really a powerful message to me personally, especially because, you know, we do these prayers for the poor souls and we're talking about hell and purgatory and heaven, you know, and and that just really struck out to me. Like, I've heard this so many times and I've never and I've never really thought about what it says. And and father was talking about how God gives us free will and that we make the decision of doing good, doing good and pleasing God 
are doing ill. And if we love someone, we try our best with love and gentility to tell them, to correct them, you know, you know, just like, I want to be with you in the end. I want, and you know, that parable might make sense to someone who we're trying to convince that we're trying to bring over because we don't want to lose them. We don't want them to be gathered with the weeds and then thrown in the fire to burn later, right? Anyway, so that's how much God loves us, that he gives us this free will. He doesn't force us to do anything, but he gives us this free will. So that's my message for today. That's what I took away from the readings. The readings were really good. Uh, if you didn't go to church, look up the, the readings for today. If you go to the Catholic, <clears throat> I don't know what's going on. If you go to the Catholic readings, you will see, you will see that reading because they're um, in that one passage, in that one um, gospel, there are three parables he tells. One is about the mustard seed, but this one just really stood out for me. All right, what is going on? No coffee, but I do have water. And I have a little companion laying down here by me. Okay, so let's talk about this. Yesterday was Mary Magdalene's day. I was really excited about that. That is Rachel's, uh, one of her patron saints, my Rachel. That was her confirmation name. And, and you know, in in our culture, a, your your saint name, your saint day is really important. So it's, it's as important as your birthday. You should celebrate that. So I know, I know Rachel was celebrating because she's with all the family in our small hometown right now. So let's talk about the saint of the day. Now, this saint stood out to me because someone, let me think who, Elois. This is Saint Brigitta, or also known as Saint Bridget. Such an interesting story. It's a lot. I'm not going to tell you a lot. Oh, yours is Bernadette. What a beautiful saint. I love and I love that name too. Um, my mother didn't. I, I think I just picked Mary, but I found out my first name is Helen Mary, but not till I was older. But I just picked Mary because I liked Mary, Mary, Mother Mary. So, Sooner, what's your confirmation name? Do you remember what it is? Hey, did Geronimo, was Geronimo ever able to talk to anybody about Geronimo, I wish you were on so I could talk to you. Just wondering about, you know, where that process is. Because right now, they're recruiting for the RCIA. Sooner, you, do you know your confirmation name? Do you remember? I'm trying to remember what Damien's was. All my kids. All right. So let's talk a little bit about St. Bridget. All right, I don't have my glass. Say Teresa, Therese. Oh, such beautiful and so many saints, so many saints to pick from. When I did when I did confirmation class, I would we went through two weeks of just talking about saints and giving, and I used this book, little blurbs of saints and the calendar, saint of the day. And they would look at the names and I said, Well, learn a little bit about that saint. Don't just pick the name because it sounds cool. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Maybe you can reach out. I, I know sometimes the wife has to do stuff, the woman has, because we're follow-through women. You know, we're just that's just how we are. Let's talk about St. Bergetta, okay? All right. I'm, okay, I'll have to read because I'm going to get off track. So she uh, was the daughter of, Uplands Lagman Berger. So she was a member of a clan, and this clan was a reigning family, the rulers. So, but her whole family was very pious, religious, and her father went to confession every single Friday. And he made these long pilgrimage, these long, hard pilgrimages. 
as far away as the Holy Land. So Bridget's mother died, leaving her, or Bridget, only 10 years old, and Catherine, nine, and a newborn baby boy named Israel. And the children were sent to their maternal aunt for further education and care. So I'm going to kind of skip, skip, skip. So Bridget, as a young child, about after, the, after she went to live with her aunt, she had um, a dream vision of the man of sorrows. I'm glad I'm seeing this because I wanted to look that up. The, she had a dream vision of the man of sorrows. And in this dream, it was very clear, very vivid. And Brigitta asked him who had done that to him, who had hurt him like that. And his answer was, all those who despise my love. And the memory of this dream never left her. And it left, it left this mark, this mark on her subconscious. And this was during the Middle Ages. Brigitta, or Bridget, was eventually married when she was 13 years old to a young man named Ulf Gutmarsen, with whom she had eight children four daughters and four sons, all of, of them survived infancy, which at that time was rare. A lot of children died because, you know, they didn't have the medical care that we have nowadays. So when the king of Sweden married, okay, when the king of Sweden, his name was Magnus Ericsson, married Blanche of Nemur, he asked his kinswoman, Bridget, to come and be a lady in waiting and to teach the young queen the language and customs of her new country. So after her years of service in court, Bridget and Ulf made the long pilgrimage to Santiago de Compostela. And it was a very dangerous, dangerous trip. And then Ulf became sick very sick and Brid Bridget feared for his death and she sat all night by his bed just praying and then this bishop appeared to her in a vision and he promised that Ulf would recover and that God had great things for her to do. He told her that his name, the, the bishop told her that he was Dennis from Patron of France. So Ulf did recover and he was able to continue his work. But then in 1930, in 1344, he became very ill. So Bridget took him to the monks where he died and was buried. And Bridget remained in a little house near the abbey and she spent long hours in prayer by his grave. And she said she loved him like her own body. She arranged her affairs among her children in various charities and prayed for guidance. She was 41 years old in the Abbey, and they called her Be My Bride and My Canal. That's what God called her. He gave her the task of founding new religious order, mainly for women, and he said that other orders had fallen into decay. Now, this is God telling Bridget this, um, and that he wanted her to revive the church and revive these, these holy orders. All right, so let's see. He showed her how her abbey church was to be built. He gave her directions concerning clothing and the prayer of the nuns. Sixty in all who needed priests as chaplains, 13 priests, four deacons, and eight lay brothers. These communities, there were two of them, were ruled by an abbess who was to represent the Blessed Virgin Mary together with the apostles in the upper room in Jerusalem. That's what it's called, the apostles in the upper room. All right, so let's see. King Magnus also uh, donated a palace and a lot of land to the monastery, to this new monastery. And almost as she began altering the palace and organizing the work, Christ appeared to her again. And he asked her to go to Rome and wait there until she got the Pope to, re because the Pope was at the time traveling and he wanted her to wait there 
till the Pope returned from France and Rome. So she was there during the holy year of 1350. Bridget left Sweden at the end of 1340, 1349, 1349, never to return. For the rest of her life, she saw visions concerning the reform of the church. She sent messages to kings and popes and many other persons in high places, directing them to work for the church. And it can be noted that Bridget never wrote in the first person. She always said that she carried a message from the very high Lord. And although she longed to become a nun, she never even saw the monastery that she started. In fact, nothing she set out to do was ever realized because God had her on a mission. She never had the Pope return to Rome permanently. She never managed to make peace between France and England. She never saw any nun in the habit that Christ had shown her. And she never returned to Sweden, but she died worn out an old lady far from home in July 1373. She can be called the patroness of failures because she didn't get to realize her own, but that's okay because she accomplished a great deal, a great deal that God himself, Jesus our Lord himself had sent her to do, had given her. In this, she was like her Lord. She also she also classed as a failure because a lot of people believe that Jesus was a failure because he hung on the cross, which he wasn't. We know that he came to do something and it was done. He died for our sins. Bridget was a successful failure as she was canonized in 1391, which is really quickly. Bridget was the only other woman, woman, only woman ever to found a religious order called Ordo Sanctissimi Salvatoris, and it was never a double order, but an order primarily for women with permanent chaplains, ruled by an abbess. The brothers had as their head not a prior, but a confessor general who was responsible for the spiritual business of both convents. That order spreads quickly, quickly through Europe, with monasteries from Scandinavia right through Europe and all the way down to Italy. In modern times, it still expands into five different independent branches, Spain, Rome, Mexico, the USA, and at the change of the century, uh, none of these foundations have brothers except the USA, which has one male convent. The last Bridgetine father died in a town called Alto Munster in 1863. And she is the patroness of Sweden. And if you look in your blue books, if you look in your blue books, you're going to see that she is, um, she has those, the famous 15 prayers of Bridget. Read that. It's a really interesting read and say the prayers. And I know Eloise's very devoted, very devoted to those 15 uh, prayers of, of, of uh, Bridget. And just read the promises that come with them. It's so interesting. And it's, it's like right in the beginning, I, okay, it's on, it starts on page eight, but if you go to page, if you go to page um, four, if you go to page four, it starts there and there's, it's like a whole little story about her and then it tells you about the promises and it says the first promise this is going to be of interest to you i will deliver 15 souls of your lineage from purgatory so if you have people that you love 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 children grandchildren and you know they're not at that spiritual level where they need to be pray for them save them. You can save their souls now. Um, and 15 sinners of your lineage will be converted. So again, if you have someone you love, love, love and keeping them in mind, you know, say, I want this person converted. I need this person converted. Say these 15 prayers. It's going to, it's going to take some time 
Connie, I know you get up so early in the morning and you do these. Okay. All right. So let's, you know what, let's, let's try to do, and I really want to get into these. I don't say these, but I've been reading and I'm telling you every time I learn about a new, a new saint, I feel there's so much to learn, so much I need to do and so much more. I need to pray, pray, pray. But it, but there's like 21 promises, read the promises and say, you know, because it's going to make you think I need to be doing this prayer. All right. So that is our saint of the day. Let's go to the blue book because not everybody's here, but you know, Susan loves this blue book. A lot of people love to hear from the blue book. Oh, there was two saints. The other saint is St. John Cassian. I'm going to tell you about her. It'll be, it'll be posted though. St. Cassian's loyalty to his teacher, St. John Chrysostom, Chrysostom, Sostum, Sostum inspires us to support each other in our faith and good works. Father, thank you for the blessing of being one part among many in the body of Christ. Okay. That's a second saint. And we're going to honor both St. Bridget and St. Let's see. And St. John Cassian. And Pray for us, St. Bridget and St. John Cassie. Amen. Pray for the Pienda prayers. All right. Let's see what else we got. All right. So this is this is the list of what we're doing. So we did our saint of the day. We did our gratitude player. And now we're going to do our Novi. Oh, we're going to do our, our, Gert, our St. Gertrude prayer. Because let's pray for it. We're not going to forget. We're going to do the St. Gertrude prayer followed by the act of love. I already did my other, I already did this one. Me and my husband did that one. So let's go to page 23. Okay, let's go to page 23. And let's do our prayer to St. Gertrude the Great. And let's say it together. Eternal Father, we offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today, for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. Act of love. Jesus, Mary, I love you. Save souls. Now we're going to do our novena, which is right. What did I do with my novena? Sorry, I have so many. I have. Oh, here it is right here. All right. So uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh, God, we adore you. We give ourselves to you. May we be the people you want us to be, and may your will be done in our lives today. We thank you for the gifts you gave Father Solanus. If it is your will, bless us with the canonization of Father Solanus so that others may imitate and carry on his love for all the poor and suffering of our world. As he rejoiced, accepted your divine plan, we ask you, according to your will, to hear our prayers for mention your prayers here through Jesus Christ our Lord amen blessed be God and all his designs we're gonna say we're gonna say uh and our father a Hail Mary and a glory be you ready that's the the concluding novena prayer our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let's do a closing prayer together, and that's to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who didst teach the hearts of thy faithful people, by sending them the light of thy Holy Spirit, grant us by the same spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Holy Spirit, sweet guest of our souls, abide in us and grant that we may ever abide in thee. Amen. 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 I finally consolidated my, my names. I had to add some names on there. Okay. So that's it for today. Thank you for being here with me. God bless all you prayer warriors. I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful um, Sunday and enjoy your families. Enjoy, enjoy your life. Be grateful for everything that God gave. Just sitting outside today, drinking my coffee early this morning before mass. I just thought how grateful and how blessed I am. And I hope you feel, feel that in your heart today. God bless you all. Have a good day. All right, bye.